church family, uh, as you probably already know, we've had a little bit of difficulty live streaming the service this morning. So our next best option is we're going to record it for you and post it tomorrow so that you'll have everything, even the wonderful sermon by Miss Charlotte. So the Lord bless you this day as we begin our service uh, with a penitential order. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Jesus said, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us, and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us listen to the appointed lessons for today. From the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among your sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, do you come peacefully? He said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eleb and thought, surely the Lord Anoint, surely, excuse me, surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his statue, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abadab 
and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David. From that day forward, Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The end of the reading. Let us read the appointed psalm by whole verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Here ends the reading. I invite you to join me in singing our hymn today, which is What Wondrous Love Is This? We will sing one verse of it throughout our service, starting with the first verse. Um, I will be singing a cappella today, um, so a little grace as we go. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to lay aside his crown for my soul, for my soul, to lay aside his crown for my soul? The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciple asked him, Rabbi, who has sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind 
so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me. While it is day, night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go, wash in the pool of Shalom, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it's someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Shalom and wash the wash. Then I went and I washed and I received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought in the Pharisees. The man who had formerly been blind, now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees says, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he's a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called his parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? The parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees. Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he's of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that through though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I've told you already, and now you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to be a disciple of his? Then they reviled him, saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here's an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from. Yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships 
him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone open the eyes of a person born blind. If the man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sin and are trying to teach us. And they drove him out. Jesus heard that he had been driven out. And when he, fa when, when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered, and who is he? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have seen him and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, we see your sin remains. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It was Christmas morning when I was in third grade and I came out the door of the living room and I saw a red three-speed Schwinn bicycle. I had wanted this bike so badly and I knew that there was no way that I was going to get it for Christmas. My mother could not afford it and there was no place in my house to hide the bicycle. But there it was, impossible, sitting right under our tree. I don't remember a single other thing that I got for Christmas in second or fourth or fifth grades, but I do remember a few things about that Christmas day. I remember after we had opened the gifts, cleaning up quickly and without being asked. I remember putting on an itchy sweater that I had also opened that morning to please my mother. And mostly, I remember bounding down the front steps with my new bike and heading out to the street where with my family, we were going to take a bike ride around the island. When I think about why that Christmas is so clear to me, why that gift stands out to me, the only thing that I can come up with is love. Where we are right now seems a long way off from Christmas morning. Well, maybe the part where we stay at home all day in our pajamas is true. But the joy and excitement, love and wonder that we feel on Christmas seems very different from this place of social distancing and sheltering in place. This place is a place of worry and fear. For those we love and for the rest of the world, what a gift it was as I started to look at the readings for this week and realized that we had the 23rd Psalm. Throughout time, the 23rd Psalm has been read to bring comfort in times of trial and sorrow, times when we are in the lowest valley, the darkest midnight, the deepest fog. Our world sure could use a good shepherd right now. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Those last four words get me every time. You are with me. I think that one of my greatest challenges right now is feeling connected. How do you feel connected when you are following the guidelines and staying home alone? My friends who live far from here suddenly seem no further than the friends that I used to see every day. It is so hard not to feel alone. 
but you are with me. The hymn we are singing today is one of my all-time favorites. What wondrous love is this speaks to the incredible gift that God gave us, Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, John 3.16. We heard those words in last week's gospel, and they are arguably the most famous words in all of scripture. God loved us so much that he gave us Jesus. What wondrous love is this? A few weeks ago in day school chapel, I asked the children of Christ Church Day School to think of the things that they love most in this world. Families, friends, pets, all made the list. A few of the younger students mentioned a beloved stuffed animal that they slept with every night. I can picture that animal clearly, a bit threadbare, with the velveteen rubbing off the nose, snuggled under the covers in the crook of a sweaty elbow. Can you picture it? Can you picture all of the things that you love most dearly? Take a moment and think about it. Close your eyes, count your blessings. As each blessing floats behind your closed eyelids, assign it a heart, a big heart. Now, just for a moment, imagine that we are all back in church together and have brought these hearts with us. At the offertory, we bring them together in front of the altar. Can you imagine the size of that mountain of love? If we stacked them one on top of the other, they would definitely reach up to the ceiling. If we placed them in a group, they would spill out and flood the aisles. Yet with all of that love, with that exorbitant, gluttonous amount of love, God loves us more. God loves us so much that he gave us Jesus. God gave us the good shepherd so that we would never have to walk alone. What wondrous love is this? Right now, we are being called to be Christ to each other in an extraordinary way. We are called to set aside our heartfelt desire to be together and because we love each other instead to be apart. We are called to stay home, providing safety not through physical connection, but through love that is so deep and vast that it will wash over the world and protect those we love and those we have never met. This love is a hard love, a challenging love, but it is also a creative love. This love calls us to try new things with technology so that we can worship together and to be patient when they don't go just right. This love calls us to pick up the phone and spend time chatting with a friend who doesn't have family in their home with them. This love is in a joyous email chain, a Facebook group, a letter dropped in the mail, a wave to a neighbor across the street as you walk the dog. This love is in the boundless patience we give to those people who are at home with us. And this love is there when that patience runs out. What wondrous love is this? This love has been shared with us, and now we are called to share it with the world. As this time set apart progresses, we will continue to inspire and create new ways to share love with each other, to be love for each other. And on those days when it is hard, when our nerves are frayed, when our patience has worn out, when we feel that we just do not have enough love to give any of it away. Take comfort and remember, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not be in want. He makes us lie down in green pastures and leads us beside still waters. He revives our souls 
and guides us along right pathways for his namesake. Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for you are with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. You spread a table before us in the presence of those who trouble us. You have anointed our heads with oil and our cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. In the reality of such love, let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, saying together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I invite you to join me in the prayers of the people. The response today is, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those who have no safe place to go. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of an economic market remember those who have no margin at all. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Everyone, take a moment to greet those in your household and think of those far away that you have no contact with. Share the peace with them silently. It's such a joy to welcome you this morning by live stream. Uh, Right now, you're uh, actually receiving a recorded uh, service uh, on this fourth Sunday of Lent. We're grateful for you who have put up with uh, technological glitches, and now we are at this moment. Our goal this morning was to make sure that we had worship, and we are doing that. So the Lord bless you as you will participate in this service uh, a little bit from now. It's certainly a different time in our world, and, and, and now we certainly have not really have all the answers. Uh, we struggle at best to figure small things out that we took for granted, uh, how to shake someone's hand when they're not around, 
how to, to receive that shake as well. And now we're here together uh, by worship virtually, and we're not even able to see each other's face except for those that are performing the worship service this morning, Ms. Charlotte and Deacon Tom. But it's been a wonderful experience to learn how to connect in different ways. And so we continue to stretch our hearts and our imaginations to figure out ways to stay connected. And I believe that we'll succeed. As we prepare for this next week, uh, I know Ms. Charlotte has a lot of uh, announcements for you. So I'm gonna turn this over to her and kind of guide you through what's gonna happen in the coming days. Well, and it's important to note as we consider the things that are coming this week, that those may change. Um, even this morning with all of the days of work and preparation we put in on Friday and Saturday for this service, um, we find ourselves recording instead of live streaming. So I will share our plans with you right now, but please know that we will adapt and change however we have to in order to be with you, um, because that is our goal. Right now, um, we do plan on an email coming out at the start of this week. And in that email, there will be opportunities for you to connect via Zoom for services throughout the week. There will be morning prayer on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Compline on Wednesday night. Um, there is children's programming that has gone out to the parish families. Um, this morning, 12 of them gathered for Sunday school at 9 a.m. And there'll be another offering for them on Tuesday. Our youth group is meeting. We are doing the things that we can to connect and be together even when we are apart. Now, I recognize the fact that we had some technology issues this morning, but I also know that technology may be unfamiliar and frightening for some of our congregation. Please know that the pastor pastoral care phone tree has started and we are starting to call people. And if you are having troubles or struggles, please name it to the person that's on the phone for you and let us find a way to help connect you and guide you through this process. This is new for all of us, and we will support and help each other as best we can. If you do not get a call, please call one of us, and we will connect you to other people in the parish. Hearing a friendly voice on the phone is very important. And last but certainly not least, our students at Christ Church Day School are in all of our hearts and on all of our minds. They are learning through distance learning with the support of their teachers and Mrs. Funk, and our schools annual fundraiser, their CCDS gala, is not taking place out of an abundance of care and concern for the people that would have attended. If you would like to still support the school in that very, very important fundraiser, we will include a link to that offer to an online auction that you can go to after the service. Um, that auction runs through Sunday night, and so if you would like to participate, I encourage you to go quickly. Thank you, Charlotte. I wasn't able to uh, preach this Sunday, and I'm glad I didn't because I needed to hear the words that Charlotte shared with all of us. So thank you, dear lady, for those wonderful words, inspiring words, and I'm sure you reached the hearts of all who are listening this morning. I did, however, write a letter that I will share with you before we pray for one another, and uh, I'll post it uh, this week. Also want to thank, before I read the letter, uh, all of our staff, uh, those you've seen this morning, and especially Christy, uh, who's behind uh, the scenes but has done so much, and uh, everyone has worked beyond uh, what is expected to, to make sure that we offer uh, quality worship for you and, and events that really uh, you can engage in at any moment. But here's my letter to you. Greetings in the name of Christ our Lord. I hope and pray that you and your family, friends, and loved ones are healthy and safe. These past days and weeks have proven most difficult and disheartening for all of humankind as we seek to overcome the deadly effects of the coronavirus. This pandemic has impacted us on a global scale in ways we never before encountered in our lifetime. We're witnessing and experiencing events and lifestyle changes we never thought possible. The effects of social distancing is proving foreign to us and contrary to our understanding of community and how we love one another. This distancing has proved devastating for all people of every religious faith group, as we can no longer gather to worship in one place. In a blink of an eye, our life's journey 
has taken a turn from normalcy to totally bizarre. We suddenly find ourselves in the wilderness, not sure how to recover and move forward once again, seeking the light of a new day. And yet facing such overwhelming circumstances, I would remind all of us that there is indeed much good news. You heard it this morning in the sermon. The good news, however, will not be found in a rebounding economy, although that would be great, or in resumed air travel around the world, which would be nice, or the removed restrictions of social distancing. That would be wonderful. It can only be found in the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord, only in our faith in him who loved us and gave himself for us. For in him, we have light and life and victory. And nothing, absolutely nothing, can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. And this, my brothers and sisters, is good news. It is the best news in such times of trial and tribulation and chaos and uncertainty. May it be so in your life, in my life. We ask all these things in the name of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. My continued thoughts and prayers for you and your loved ones. There is a prayer that's in your bulletin that I would like to invite us to pray together. It's a prayer for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries in the month of March. And since we can't see you, we want to pray for your birthday and anniversary. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may the peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning, as we share Holy Communion, on behalf of all of you, I will receive the blood, body and blood of Christ, our Lord. I invite you to join me in the second verse of What Wondrous Love. To God and to the Lamb, I will sing. I will sing to God and to the Lamb. I will sing to God and to the Lamb, who is the great I am. While millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing. While millions join the theme, I will sing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, 
to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. For our communion hymn, please join me in singing the third verse of What Wondrous Love Is This? And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. I'll sing on, and when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing on. Now please join in our post-communion prayer. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessing. God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. For our recessional today, you will sing all three verses of What Wondrous Love Is This? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss? to lay aside his crown for my soul, for my soul, to lay aside his crown for my soul. To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing to God and to the Lamb, who is the great I am. While millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing. While millions join the theme, I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on, and through eternity, I'll sing on. My brothers and sisters, let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.